we ended with that video. Uh, yes, I I do feel, yeah, it's a bad time to do a video about shooting guns or whatever, but we can pretend there wasn't a gun or something. The physics, the physics I'm trying to get across is just that if something is launched out, um, the fact that it's moving horizontally is not, doesn't have any effect on what happens vertically. And so the amount of time it takes for this projectile to just be dropped to the ground is exactly the same amount of time as it takes for it to hit the ground if it's launched out horizontally. So let's do those calculations and you can sort of see where that comes into the equations. So the first example, is um, here's you. <laughs> Sitting and standing there in your house in Area 51 or whatever it's called. And you drop a bullet down to the ground from a height of one meter. Um, how long does it take for the bullet to hit the ground? You guys talking about physics? Bullets and stuff? If you're not, then shut up! <laughs> okay. So, um... Okay, so time equals zero. Uh, what do we want to choose as the time equals zero instant? Okay, he drops it, yep. This is a girl. Um, time final. Yep. Uh, and then the coordinate system I'm going to put that where I pretty much always do in free fall problems. Um, oh, speaking of free falling, Tom Petty died since last time. We a lot of bad stuffs happened since last time we were together. Yeah. Well, we're, we'll honor him with these problems today. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, so uh, the origin is on the ground, and the coordinate system orientation is shown. And now let's think about what we know and want. Do we know how long it takes to hit the ground? No, that's what we want. Do we know anything about the initial position? Yeah, so uh, what we're trying to do is in this coordinate system, we're just trying to figure out the coordinates of the object when time is equal to zero. So that's zero x and one y. So p i x is zero, p i y is one. Do we know anything about the final position? Yes, what do we know? Yeah, x is still going to be 0, but um, let's think. There are a couple things that, um, let's pretend like that's something we would have to calculate. So let's just, and it's not a big deal if you put it in the known column, but sometimes it'll make it look like equations will work that, end up just leading you down like everything cancels out and you can't solve for anything. So let's pretend that we don't know anything about the x velocity 
after that first instant, and let's pretend we don't know anything about the exposition after that first instant. Um, but what we do know is PFY is zero because it hits the ground. Do we know anything about the velocity at time zero? Zero, yep, it's dropped. And do we know anything about final velocity? We're going to say no. It's that same thing that we were just talking about. Um, really, in truth, we know that, um, that the final x component of the velocity is the same as the initial x component of the velocity. And that's because velocity components don't change if there's no acceleration in that direction. So since the acceleration of gravity is only vertical, um, in free fall problems, the x component of velocity never changes. But that's not something that we're going to use in problems. That's just sort of witty cocktail banter, you know? Um, so we don't know anything about the final velocity. And then the acceleration, it's free fall, so the x component is 0. And the y component is negative 9.81. Is there an equation that will work with those? There is. Second one, yep. And the, the y component of that second equation, so 2 times ay uh, times the quantity pfy minus piy is equal to vf. No, that's the third one. Yes, yes. <laughs> I know. Okay. Uh, P F Y is equal to P I Y plus V I Y T F plus one half A Y T F squared. Okay, so um, zero is equal to one plus, this whole term goes away because VIY is 0, minus 4.905 PF squared. And so 4.905 PF squared is equal to 1. Divide both sides by 4.905, and you get TF squared is equal to 1 over 4.905, and take the square root, and Tf is equal to plus or minus, I think it's 0.4515, I just did this one yesterday. And then you have to choose positive or negative, which is easy if you're working with times. Uh, we only want positive times. Okay, so uh, this equation, we're going we're gonna to see this again. So I'm going to highlight that. Any questions about that calculation? Okay, so now let's do the other example. So this time, um, this bullet shot horizontally. Um, and I'm going to say that its initial speed is 500 meters per second, like 1,000 miles an hour. And again, we're going to say that it's shot from a height of one meter. It's and 
and we want to know how long it will take to hit the ground. Bless you. Um, so I'll put the coordinate system right underneath where the bullet is when time is equal to zero. Time equals zero, again, is going to be when it's shot. Time final is when it hits the ground. And the origin and the coordinate system are shown. And now we'll go through what variables we know and want. Uh, do we know time final? No. We want it. Do we know P initial? Uh, yeah, it's the same as it was before. It's just, uh, so at time equals zero. The coordinates of the object are zero and x. You know, the object's right here. So zero, x, time equals zero. And then the coordinates of the And PIY is 1. And what do we know about the final position? Yeah, all we know about that is that the Y final position is 0. What do we know about the initial velocity? Mm -hmm. So we know that the speed is... 500 meters per second, and we know the direction is straight horizontal like that. So we want to come up with the components of a vector like this. And if you put the origin of the coordinate system at the tail of the vector, there are two ways you can think about that. Uh, one is that you're just trying to come up with, um, you're just trying to come up with the coordinates of where the head is. So if you go 500 along the positive x-axis, what are the coordinates of that point? 500, 0. And so, so those are the components. You could also think about it as what angle do you have to go counterclockwise from the positive x-axis to the vector? 0. And so you could do it as 500 times cosine is 0, 500 sine is 0, and you get the same thing, 500 for x, 0 for y. Okay, so VIX is 500, VIY is 0. Do we know anything about um, V final? Yeah. Secretly, we know that VFX is 500, but we're not working with that. And then it's free fall, so the x component of acceleration is 0, y component of acceleration is negative 9.81. And is there an equation that works with that? It's the same one as before. PFY is equal to PIY plus VIY PF plus 1 half. Ay pf squared, and put the numbers in, you get 0 is equal to 1 plus 0 minus 4.905 pf squared. And if you look at that equation compared to the example before, it's the exact same equation even though... Uh, you know, one of them's moving horizontally 500 meter, meters per second, and the other one is horizontally at rest. And so the fact that the thing's moving horizontally doesn't come into the equation that matters in any way, okay? That equation is only dealing with stuff happening vertically, and so it doesn't care what's happening horizontally.
Um, and so solve this. Since it's the same equation, it's going to come out to give the same thing. So Tf is equal to positive uh, 0.4515 seconds. So it's the same as dropped. And it's the same as the case where the bullets drop because this uh, governing equation is exactly the same. Um, when they did the experiment in Mythbusters, the, they were very close to dead on in, in where, when two bullets landed, right? I think it was like they said 60 milliseconds or something. Um, but they were off a little bit. So how did that happen, that, that they weren't exactly at the same time? So to answer that, let's think about uh, what would happen if, so let's do the calculation now. So the bullet, say we're trying to fire it horizontally, but instead of being exactly horizontal, we're off by one degree. Okay? A whole circle is 360 degrees, so one degree is a very small amount to be off. Right. So now we're going to do this problem where the bullets fired at a speed of 500 meters per second, one degree above horizontal. So in this case, um, this is supposed to be one of those kind of guns that ladies used to use in like all timey movies, like pearl handles. Okay, so it's going 500 meters per second. And this angle is exaggerated. One degree is really small. But let's say that it's, since you can never get something oriented perfectly, there's always going to be some error in how it's tilted up and down. And we're going to say that it's off by one degree. Um, everything else will be the same. It's still one meter above the ground. And I'll still put the coordinate system on the ground right below where the bullet shot from. Time equals zero is when it's fired. Time final is when it hits the ground. The origin and the coordinate system are shown. And now let's think about what we know and what we want. Um, do we know time final? No. Do we know initial position? It's the same as it was in the other two cases. So DIX is 0, DIY is 1. Do we know anything about the final position? P, F, Y is zero. Do we know anything about the initial velocity? Yeah, we can get that. OK, so to get that, we're going to use the fact that this vector has a magnitude of 500. And it's at an angle of one degree above horizontal. So this is one degree. And put the tail of the vector at the origin. Um, and so what's the counterclockwise angle from the positive x-axis to the vector? 
Just one, yep. And so uh, this velocity is 500 times cosine of one, 500 times sine of one. And can someone calculate that, please? Four nine nine point nine two. So almost all of it's horizontal because one degree is a very small amount. What is it? Eight point seven. I'll call it. We know anything about the final velocity? Only at cocktail parties. And then AX is zero. And AY is negative 9.81. Is there an equation that works with those? I think it's going to be the same one. So PFY is equal to PIY plus VIY TF plus one half AY TF squared. Um, so that gives us that zero is equal to one plus, remember in the other two examples, this second term went away because we didn't have any vertical component to the initial velocity. But now we do have one, VIY is 8.73. So 8.73 TF minus 4.905 TF squared. Now we can't just rearrange it and uh, take the square root. We have to use the quadratic formula. Uh, does anyone have that programmed into their calculator? Can someone punch that in for me? So one of these roots is going to be negative. We don't care about that one. And then there's going to be a positive one. And it's such a small angle. You'd think it has to be something close to 0.45 seconds, right? I mean, maybe 0.46 or 0.47 seconds. Yeah, 1.89 seconds. Isn't that kind of surprising? Maybe not. Um, but so just aiming this bullet one degree above the horizontal made the time for it to hit the ground go from 0.45 seconds, the same time as to drop it, uh, to almost two seconds. It, what, quadrupled the time? So how is that possible? Well, um, if you look at the so if you look at the y component of the initial velocity obviously you can tell that the x component has by far more of that total more of that total speed is in the x direction than the y direction but 500 meters per second is so fast that even just the component in the y direction which is a small fraction of that total speed is a pretty big speed it's starting out with a um, vertical initial velocity of like 20 miles per hour. And so it's going to take exactly as long for this bullet to hit the ground as it would take if you took that bullet and threw it up into the air with a starting speed of 20 miles per hour, which is, that's throwing it pretty fast, you know, like that's hard to do straight up into the air. And so it's going to go all the way up as high as it would if you just threw it up into the air 20 miles per hour. It would, we could do that calculation, it would come out to be, so if you start at three feet up, okay, and tilt it just a tiny little bit, one degree above horizontal and shoot it, it won't start, it'll start on its way up and it won't start falling back down until it's gotten 16 feet up in the air, you know, just from that little bit of elevation. And it makes sense if you think about what would happen if you threw something 20 miles per hour into the air, that it would go up 16 feet before it comes back down. So anyways, uh, when you think about that, 
it's pretty impressive that they could get the times to match that accurately uh, in that Mythbusters video because, you know, I suppose we could calculate, but let's not, um, how, how close to horizontal they would have to have it for the time to be off by only 60 milliseconds, uh, a tiny, tiny fraction of one degree, you know. Any questions about any of those? Let's do another one. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, this one might have, you know, practical uses for you. So let's say you're, uh, this is you. And you're riding your unicycle. Yeah. Uh, it would be, um, I, I don't think there's any, like, no obvious, like, pattern occurs to me, but it would hit the ground really, really fast. Because it, it, it would hit the ground as fast as if you, well, it would be just like, throwing it down towards the ground at 20 miles per hour. You know, that's how long it would take from three feet high, yeah. So it would hit the ground way sooner. Okay, so there's your unicycle. And um, out here on the floor, there's a cup. And the cup itself is 0.15 meters high. And the question is, horizontally, how far away do you have to release that ball? Well, let's say this is, let's say you're releasing that ball from... Uh, I don't know, how tall is your unicycle? 1.5 meters? So horizontally, how far away do you have to release that ball, drop that ball, so it lands right in the cup? This is like a beer pong uh, party trick. You can, this is like, a, you can do this trick and then you can tell people that the horizontal velocity doesn't change. Be like the bell of the ball. Um, so horizontally, how far away do you have to be? When you drop the ball, so it lands in the cup. And one thing about, if you are going to try this with beer pong, um, what would be the problem of using a tennis, a uh, ping pong ball? Yes, air resistance. Ping pong balls have way too little mass per surface area. And so air resistance would mess up your calculations. You might want to use like a pinball or something. Um, <laughs> don't learn that the hard way like I had to. Um, and let's say that you can ride your unicycle five meters per second. OK, so time equals 0. Um, that's going to be when it's dropped. Yeah. 
Time final is when it gets to the cup. And so what it means for it to get to the cup is when the ball reaches a height of 0.15 meters. And then the coordinate system, I'm going to use the same one I always do. Uh, I'll put it on the ground right below the object at time equals zero. Uh, yeah, 1.5. Oh, the final one. Uh, so, like, we're going to start the stopwatch when it's dropped, and we're going to stop the stopwatch when it gets to the height of the cup. Okay, so now figure out what we know and what we want. Uh, do we know time final? No. Do we want it? No, we don't care. Um, question? Yeah, all we're trying to find is that horizontal distance. Uh, do we know anything about the initial position? Question? Anyone? Do we know anything about the initial position? Yes. Um, so if you think of the coordinates of the object at that instant, uh, it's 0x, 1.5y. Uh, do we know anything about the final position? Yeah, we know that uh, PFY is 0.15. We don't know PFX, but uh, that's what we're trying to find. What we're trying to calculate is how far, so what we're really calculating kind of is a kind of reverse of the way I des described it. We're saying once the ball's dropped, how far away does that cup have to be positioned horizontally for the ball to land in it? Okay, that's the same question. Who has a question about anything right now? <laughs> Um, what about initial velocity? Yeah, so how do we know what that is? Yeah, uh, so remember when something's dropped, its velocity at the instant it's dropped is the same as the velocity of what it's dropped from. So we've used that before in like on bridges and stuff that has no velocity. This time, uh, the person is sitting on a unicycle that's going five meters per second. And so the initial velocity is five meters per second in that direction. And figuring that out is the same as figuring out the coordinates of this point. And so that's positive five X zero Y. So VIX is 5, VIY is 0. Do we know anything about the final velocity? We don't know anything about that. Uh, there's acceleration in the wider. Yeah, we don't. Um, and then the acceleration, free fall acceleration is 0x, negative 9.81y. Is there an equation that works with that? 
almost, but we don't know time final. So I think in this case, I'm sure, uh, none of those three equations work for either component. And so what do we do if no equations work? Yeah. Find. OK, so to find TF, we can use uh, the one that we've used for those previous examples. PFY is equal to PIY plus VIY time final plus one half VY T final squared. Um, so 0.15 is equal to 1.5 plus VIY is zero minus 4.905 TF squared. And so you get 4.905 TF squared is equal to 1.35, right? Uh, so time final squared is equal to 1.35 divided by 4.905, and then what do you get for time final? Zero point five two five. Okay. So now that we know the, the time that it takes, you know, now that's in our column of known variables. And now we can look for an equation that works with all these plus time final is also known. What equation are we going to use? We're trying to find PFX. Yeah, the second one again, but this time the X component. Yep. So PFX is equal to PIX plus VIX time final plus one half AX T final squared. So PFX is equal to zero plus VIX is five. Time final is 0.525. AX is zero. Be careful about that. It's easy to, you know, see that acceleration and put in the acceleration of gravity. This is horizontal now. Uh, and so you get uh, 2.625. Yes. Speeders. Because the acceleration is down, this is what we know the acceleration of gravity looks like. And there's our coordinate system. So the components of the acceleration vector are the coordinates of that point, the head of the vector. And that's um, 0x. 9.81 in the negative y direction, so 0, negative 9.81. Is that unconvincing? OK. OK, so if, if you do this trick and you can go exactly 5 meters per second on your unicycle, just mark off a little piece of tape 2.625 meters away. Money. Any questions about that one? OK. I'm going to give you one to work on, all right? It's time. You're ready. OK. 
Okay, so here's a helicopter. I really only do this problem because I like drawing helicopters like this. <laughs> and let's say the helicopter is moving 40 meters per second at an angle of 20 degrees above the horizontal. Um, and an object is dropped when the helicopter is 30 meters high. And the question is, um, how high is the object at its highest point? OK, so the first thing we have to get straight is that um, for a lot of people, or most people, um, your first thought is that this question doesn't make much sense. The answer is just going to be 30 meters because the helicopter, you know, the object's 30 meters high. The person just drops it, and then from there it goes down. But the key thing you have to notice to understand what's going to happen here is that um, when something is dropped from a moving, you know, vehicle or whatever, uh, the object behaves exactly the same way as it would if it were launched uh, with the velocity of that vehicle, you know? Um, so what's gonna happen here is, since the helicopter is moving, I don't, I don't know if there's any helicopters that can do this, that helicopter is moving like 90 miles an hour at an angle of 20 degrees. That's asking a lot from your helicopter. But, um, so this is like taking an object 30 meters high and launching it 20 degrees above horizontal at 90 miles an hour. And if you think of it that way, it's, it's obvious that this object is gonna, you know, go up, you know, it's, and it's, it's gonna follow this parabolic path up until it gets to the highest point, and then it's gonna start going down. So its highest point is gonna be something higher than 30 meters. Okay. Um, okay, so, uh, take a while, work together on this, uh, talk out loud, you know, um, ask me questions if you get stuck. Go. Thank you. Okay, so time equals zero is when it's dropped. Time final is when it reaches the highest point. And when it gets to the highest point, how are we going to specify that? Like, so yeah, that's what we want is position final y. But whenever we're looking for something happening at the highest point, we're always going to use something we know about the highest point. And what's that? Yeah, the y component of the velocity at that point is zero. Yeah, so it's right. It's still it's still moving horizontally. It just uh, it's just switching from rising slowly to falling slowly. Okay, so at that point, v y is equal to zero. Um, and then the origin I'll put on the ground beneath the release point. You know, in other words, beneath the object at time equals zero. And then the coordinate system, I'll have the y-axis up, x-axis along the ground.
Do we know time final? Nope. But it'd be okay if we never got that. Uh, do we know anything about the initial position? Yeah, so PIX is zero, PIY is 30. Do we know anything about the final position? No, but we want PFY, that's what we're looking for. Do we know anything about the initial velocity? We can, we can get that from the speed and the direction. So we know that the incidents dropped. The object's moving 40 meters per second at an angle 20 degrees above the horizontal. So um, that velocity vector is 40 times cosine of 20, 40 times sine of 20. And that gives an x component of 37.59 and a y component of 13.68. We don't know, uh, that's not true. Uh, what do we know about the final velocity? Yeah, we know that VFY is equal to zero. And then the acceleration is what it always is. Uh, AX is zero, AY is negative 9.81. Is there any equation that works with these? I think the third one, right? So 2 times AY times the quantity PFY minus PIY is equal to VFY squared minus VIY squared. So 2 times negative 9.81 times the quantity PF y minus 30 is equal to 0 squared minus 13.68 squared. Okay, so that's negative 19.62 times the quantity PF y minus 30 is equal to negative 13.68 squared. Now we have to distribute this negative 19.62 through these parentheses. So negative 19.62 times PFY uh, plus 19.62 times 30, which is... Uh, 588.6, I think. And then what's 13.68 squared? One eighty-seven point one four. Okay, and that's negative. Uh, this should have been positive. Okay, so um, negative 19.62 PFY is equal to negative 588.6 minus 187.14. And then divide both sides by negative 19.62. And PFY, what do you get for that? Thirty-nine point five four meters. Okay, so before this object starts heading back down towards the ground, 
it rises 10 meters. That's a long way. Uh, you know, 9.54 meters, 30 feet higher into the air than what it started. Yes. V final X, that's the one that, um, it is true that in these problems, V final X is always the same as V initial X. But writing it down here, just um, logistically, like it just causes problems. Because it'll make you think there are equations you can use, but things will cancel out and, and then you will have just wasted a little time, you know. It's not the worst thing in the world, but if you leave it off, that won't ever happen. Any other questions about that? Um, the way that I, uh, I think that I always choose the coordinate system location is, so like, this is the object at time equals zero, okay? I always choose the origin of the coordinate system to be on the ground right underneath the object at time equals zero. And so that means what initial position always means is at time equals zero, what are the coordinates of the object? Okay. So if this is the object at time equals zero, what are the coordinates right there? And, you know, nothing in the x direction and then whatever the height is. Any other questions? Okay, let's stop there. See you Thursday. <laughs>